the black brant can be found all across the Canadian wilderness. Its small stature belies its awesome flight potential. From its breeding grounds in Winnipeg, Manitoba, to its proving grounds all across the world, the black brant is a true source of Canadian pride. Conceived of in the optimism of the 1950s, the rocket would provide an invaluable tool to scientists in their effort to better understand the characteristics of the upper atmosphere. Of particular interest was the aurora and the ionosphere. With the threat of Soviet ballistic missiles and possible invasion over the poles, military planners needed to know how the aurora and ionosphere affected radar and radio communications. For this reason, Churchill, Manitoba was selected as the preferred launch site for the rocket on Canadian territory. Churchill was a natural choice as it had easy access to the Aurora due to its location, as well as rail and air links to the south, and a military base to provide logistical support. The vast Hudson Bay would provide an ideal rocket range as the area was practically devoid of people. The returning rockets and their payloads would crash harmlessly into the surrounding countryside for recovery. A launch facility was built in 1954 along with support facilities. The extreme weather meant that additional systems had to be in place in order to moderate the temperature of the rocket before launch. Unfortunately, the project was plagued by inconsistent funding and bad luck. The facility was closed in 1955 but reopened again in 1956 as part of Canada's contribution to the International Geophysical Year. It was then closed in 1958 with the conclusion of the IGY, but reopened in late 1959 with funding from the U.S. Army. A fire in 1960 destroyed much of the launch facilities and the following two years were spent rebuilding. Launches resumed in 1963 and continued until 1970 when the American funding was cut and full control of the facility was given back to the Canadian National Research Council. Sporadic launches were carried out during the 1970s and 80s, but by 1985 the facility was effectively shut down. Churchill was home to not only the Black Brant family of sounding rockets, but also the rockets of Canadian allies and research groups. With the focus on Churchill, the Canadian government wanted to compete in the global market for sounding rockets. Funding was allocated and preliminary design work for what would become the Black Brant was started by the Canadian Armament Research and Development Establishment, or CARD, in Valcalche, Quebec. The intention was to build a highly reliable, low-cost sounding rocket to probe the upper atmosphere. Sounding rockets differ from other designs in that they are unguided and meant to carry various scientific payloads into space on suborbital flights. These flights enter vertically into space but lack the required speed to achieve orbit. CARD had experience with high-powered rocketry as a result of their research into anti-ballistic missile systems during the early 1950s. The forward-thinking project intended to protect Canadian interests and those of our allies from the possible use of ballistic missiles loaded with both conventional and nuclear explosives. Several missile terminal guidance systems and rocket airframes were developed. The high cost of the project caused it to be cancelled during the drastic budget cuts of the mid to late 1950s. However, elements would find their way into other projects at CARD, such as the Velvet Glove Air-to-Air -air Guided Missile Project. The high-energy propellant formulas and airframes, which were optimized for high-altitude suborbital trajectories, were well suited to the Black Brant project. While CART had the experience to get the program started, it lacked the production capabilities necessary to field a large number of rockets. Bristol Aerospace of Winnipeg, Manitoba became involved in the project as the primary hardware contractor and began to mass produce the design. CART would provide the propellant as well as technical expertise to develop the rocket further. Their first design was called the PTV, or Propellant Test Vehicle. The PTV became the Black Brant 1, named after the goose found across Canada. Approximately 17 tests were carried out to examine the propellant performance as well as the aerodynamics of the rocket, beginning in September of 1959. Launches were performed at the Churchill Rocket Range until the facility was damaged by fire. 
Further tests were carried out at the Wallops Range in the American state of Virginia until the damage could be repaired back in Churchill. The Black Brant II was the first operational version of the rocket. Over 62 were launched, most by the National Research Council, between October 1960 and February 1974. The rocket was divided into several parts. The base of the rocket contains the exhaust cone and the engine casing containing the propellant. Attached to this are the aerodynamic fins. The upper part of the rocket contains the payload section and the aerodynamic nose cone. The rocket's booster stage lifts the payload vertically until the apex of its trajectory, where it is deployed to carry out its task, typically after being spin stabilized. Unlike orbital payloads that can remain at high altitudes for years, a sounding rocket's payload only has a relatively brief period of time, usually no more than a few dozen minutes, to gather its data. The Black Brants were unguided and relied on aerodynamic fins and spin stabilization for accurate trajectories. The trajectory of the rocket is set at launch by firing it from a rail, after which the fins take over and provide spin stabilization. Once the rocket leaves the atmosphere, this spin provides gyroscopic stabilization, ensuring the payload and any further stages will follow the predicted trajectory. The payload typically needs to be unspun to deploy its sensors. This is typically done through the so-called yo-yo method of deploying long wires. This is just like a figure skater, extending his arm to slow down his rotation in a spin. After all is said and done, the payload and rocket stages then fall back to Earth and can be recovered. There were two versions of the Black Brant II, the A model which had three fins, and the B model which had four. Both versions were designed to carry a payload of around 68 kilograms to an altitude of 250 kilometers. As the performance requirements for the rocket were redefined, three new designs were proposed to meet them. The first was the Black Brant III. It was a scaled-down version of the Black Brant II and had reduced altitude and payload performance to meet the needs of researchers. Two versions are defined by the type of propellant used. The 3A used the same propellant as the 2A, and the 3B version which featured an improved formula. The 3B would later be used as the upper stage on the Black Brant IV. A typical launch would carry around 18 kilograms to altitudes over 175 kilometers. The next iteration was the Black Brant V, and it was an improved version of the Black Brant II. It had revised aerodynamics and an improved propellant formula. It could carry a significantly larger payload to altitudes similar to the 2A and 2B models. Several variations on this model were produced. The 5A had three fins and used the same propellant as the Black Brant II. Next came the 5B, which also had three fins but used an improved propellant formula. The final variation was identical to the 5B except that it had four fins. This model would become the most commonly produced in the Black Brant family. In addition to over 200 launches as a single stage rocket, the Black Brant 5 was launched another 700 times as part of a multi stage combination. The Black Brant 4 series provided scientists with the ability to study the upper atmosphere and ionosphere of the Earth and provide valuable data about the aurora. It was a two stage rocket using a 5A for the lower stage and a 3A for the upper stage. The two stages were connected using an adapter that also contained the separation charges and the upper stage ignition system. The stages would separate due to aerodynamic drag once the charges had gone off. This configuration could carry a payload similar to the Black Brant III, but to four times the altitude. Two additional variants were produced. The 4A was similar to the 4, but used a 5B lower stage and a 3B upper stage. The 4B had a 5C lower stage and a 3B upper stage. The next series of rockets were designed to meet a different purpose. They were meteorological sounding rockets and so had drastically reduced performance specifications. The Black Brant 6 had much smaller proportions than the Black Brant 5, 
and were designed to remain within the Earth's atmosphere at between 50 and 100 kilometers. The Black Brand 7 was scaled down even further and filled a similar endoatmospheric role. Renewed focus on higher altitude and payload performance led to the development of the next two versions. The Black Brand 8 and 9 rockets were two stage versions of the Black Brand 5, incorporating a booster section from surplus missiles in the American inventory. The 8 used a booster from a Nikkei missile, while the 9 used one from a Terrier missile. Both models used a 5A, B, or C as an upper stage. Other variations of the design are designated by detailing the exact type of Nikkei or Terrier booster that was used. The use of surplus missile boosters as a first stage was a low-cost alternative to developing an entirely new booster section design. Designers at Card and Bristol wanted to increase the altitude performance of their now well-established rocket design, and so were focused on developing a low-cost third stage. The Nika, which means Little Goose, was a cut-down and finless version of the Black Brand 5. It was loaded with better propellant and intended to be used as an upper stage on future multi-stage models. Its incorporation into the Black Brand family dramatically increased the performance of the rockets. Payloads could be carried much higher, allowing for increased capability and mission time. The Nika stage was launched 69 times as part of the Black Brand 10 and 12 models. The Black Brand 10 was an extension of the Black Brand 8 and 9 models. It maintained the Terrier booster, but added a Nika third stage. This combination allowed it to carry payloads of around 90 kilograms to altitudes well over 1,000 kilometers. A revised separation system between the Nika stage and Black Brand 5 second stage was necessary due to the lack of atmospheric drag normally required for the separation. Attempts to further increase the payload capabilities of the rockets led to the next iteration in the series. The Black Brand 11 would lift a larger payload at the expense of altitude as compared to the 10. The 11 series had three stages consisting of large surplus boosters. The first stage was a booster section from a Talus rocket. The second was a booster off a Taurus rocket, and the third stage was a 5C. Eight launches were carried out with this configuration between 1990 and 2012. The Black Brand 12 was the final iteration of the Black Brand family, and could achieve the highest altitude in the series. The Black Brand 12 was a four-stage rocket similar to the Black Brand 11, but with an added Nika upper stage. It had one Talus and one Taurus booster beneath the 5B. The payload, which averaged around 136 kilograms, was carried by the Nika upper stage to well over 1,500 kilometers altitude. The Black Brand 12 model completed the family that consisted of 28 different versions. These ranged from small single-stage meteorological rockets to large multi-stage high-altitude rockets in order to suit the requirements of allied research groups. Operational launches were carried out starting in 1960 and carrying on through the 2010s. The Black Brand 5 was the most produced model, as it was incorporated into the multi-stage variants, as well as launched on its own. Bristol Aerospace has produced an excess of 900 Black Brands beginning in 1966, and production continuing to the present day. The NRC, the Canadian Space Agency and the U.S.'s NASA continues to use the sounding rocket to carry out some of its high-altitude studies. Although it faced a fair amount of competition, the Black Brand series of sounding rockets had a reputation for affordability and reliability, earned through over 1,100 successful launches. Together they had a success rate of 98%. One of the keys to the Black Brand series was the reliable, high-energy solid rocket propellant that went into its boosters. Derivatives of the propellant formulas used in the Black Brand rockets found their way into many other Canadian projects. These included the development of the Velvet Glove radar-guided missile and the upper stage of the Marlet gun-launched orbital vehicle. 
Bristol Aerospace remained a close partner with the Canadian military and applied the propellant formulas to other advanced military projects. These included producing the highly reliable booster sections for the CL-89 and CL-289 drones, as well as producing and developing the accurate CVR-7 70mm ground attack rocket. The Black Brant is a little-known Canadian success story in the field of space science. While other countries were developing large complicated orbital rockets, Canadian scientists focused on the humble sounding rocket. That focus developed one of the most successful sounding rockets in the Western world and allowed Canada to dominate the market to suborbital space. For a more complete story on the Black Brant, why not contact the Canadian Wildlife Service in Ottawa? <laughs>